Hello and welcome to another Rygate Maths video focusing on tr the trigonometry from the second year of the A-level syllabus. This video is going to be focusing on calculations with reciprocal functions. So having watched the final, the last video on the graphs and introductions to these functions of sec, cosec and cot, some of you may have looked at your calculators because that's what you do with trigonometry, which is fine. That's what your teachers and we at Rygate Maths will expect. However, you probably have found that unless you have a very fancy calculator, you don't have a sec button. So how would we work out the value of sec 280? Well, very simply we know that this is the same as 1 over cos of 280, which you then just stick in your calculator. So we're clearly working in degrees. If you're picky, there you go. Let's put the degree sign on. So instead of typing in sec 280, we know that sec is 1 over cos, so we just do 1 over cos of 280 and it gives us the answer which we'll give to three significant figures so inverse trig sorry reciprocal trig works in both degrees and in radians but it very much takes takes a while to get used to doing this thing. This is going to become very important when we start solving equations using these things. But let's have a look at another. So we want to work out cot of 115 degrees. Well, cot is 1 over tan. So in our calculator, we type in 1 over, fancy, I fancy using the divide sign this time instead, tan. 115. And we get our answer there. Again, giving our answer to three significant figures. Ideas with exact values also work. So if we want to calculate the exact value of sec of 210, well, we know that's the same as 1 over cos 210. Now, obviously, we could put this straight in our calculator, but that's kind of not the point of this example that we're going through here. Because of the way the angles work, we know that 210 is going to put us down here, going this way. This angle is 30. So the size of cos of 210 is going to be the same as the size of cos 30. Because it's in the t quadrant, it's going to be minus. So we know that cos 30 is root 3 over 2. This is 1 over minus root 3 over 2 which is minus 2 over root 3, which we can then simplify to minus 2 root 3 over 3. To check it's right, let's do it on the calculator. So 1 over cos of 210 minus root 2, 2 root 3 over 3. As I said, these work in degrees and in radians. So let's do it with cosec 3 pi over 4. Again, we know that's 1 over sine 3 pi by 4. Going back to our diagram, 3 pi over 4 is between pi over 2 and pi. So it puts us somewhere in here with this acute angle being pi over 4. So this is the same. It's 1 over sine 
pi over 4. Positive because it's in the s quadrant. Sine pi over 4, hopefully you all know, is 1 over root 2. Or root 2 over 2. But writing it as 1 over root 2 helps in this instance. Because this just comes out as root 2. And again, you can check it on your calculators. So now we're going to have a look at solving equations using this, these reciprocal trig functions. The main thing to remember is it's basically the same as what you've been doing since GCSE with trig functions, just an extra step first. So we want to solve this equation, cosec theta equals root 2. Now, cosec is the same as 1 over sine. I'm going to take an aside from this question just for a moment to highlight something that students generally find difficult, is remembering which one's which. So, you can just learn them, of course. But there is a little trick, is if you look at the third letter in each, that tells you which one you want to use. So the third letter in cosec is an S, that means it's sine. The third letter in sec is a C, which means it's cos, 1 over cos. And the third letter in cot is T, so it's 1 over tan. Students generally don't have a problem remembering this one because it's got a T in it. It's these two that students get mixed up. So be very, very careful. So let's get back to this question in hand. We know that 1 over sine theta is root 2, which stands to reason then that sine theta is 1 over root 2. Now with this question, you can either know the answers because this is an exact trig ratio, or just use your calculator finding principal value, secondary value. So we know that sine 45 is 1 over root 2, and then our secondary value is 180 minus 45. That gives us two solutions here. This is the next example we're going to look at. I'd like you to have a go at it first, so pause the video and have a go yourself, being careful this is 2 theta. So you should have realised that because it's 2 theta we need to think about finding all solutions to 2 theta between 0 and 720, so that means there are going to be more solutions. Other than that it works exactly the same as the last example, or in a similar way, with a different function. So we know that 1 over tan 2 theta is root 3. Writing this is a really important step. Quite often this will be allocated a mark in the exam for clearly showing the examiner you know this link. So make sure you write it down. Here we can jump to tan 2 theta is 1 over root 3. And again, this is an exact trig ratio. So if you know it, great. If you don't, stick it in your calculator. So we can do inverse tan, making sure we're in degrees, because our original question was 0 to 360. Doing tan, inverse tan of oops, 1 over root 3. And you can see our principal value is 30. To work out secondary value of tan, we add 180. And remember, we now need to find all answers between 0 and 720. So we need to keep going. Remember, tan is unique in that we can just keep adding 180 to find subsequent values. So our next one is 390. And the fourth is 570. We can see if we go any further, 
we get 750, which is outside of this interval here, so we don't want to include it. All that we now need to do is divide all the answers by 2 to get our four solutions. The last type of example we're going to do for this video is this type of question here, which is all about manipulating trig expressions. We're going to do this in a lot more depth in a later video when we start looking at trig identities, but for now let's have a look at this question here. So we are trying to prove that this expression on the left is equal to cos cubed theta. So because we're trying to prove that one thing is the same as another, we're going to start with one side. In this case, the left hand side, because we can do more stuff to it. So the left hand side is cot theta cosec theta over sec squared theta plus cosec squared theta. Now, when you get more familiar with the trig identity type side of things, you can do this in fewer steps. But for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at this in a little more depth than perhaps you would necessarily need. So we're going to look at the numerator. So we know that this is cot, oops, cot theta cosec theta. So let's think about what this means. Well, cot theta is 1 over tan. We know from our trig identities that tan is 1 over, sorry, tan is sine over cos. 1 over a fraction, we flip the bottom fraction. So which gives us this relationship, cot theta is cos theta over sine theta. This is one of the trig identities we'll use in a lot more detail in a later video. So that gives us a little bit of wiggle with this expression here. Because cot we can write as cos over sine. And we know cosec theta is 1 over sine. So we can tidy this numerator up as cos theta over sine squared theta. Now let's look at the denominator. So we've got cosec sec squared theta plus cosec squared theta. Now, Clearly this is going to use something to do with sine squared plus cos squared is 1, but both of these are 1 over, so it doesn't work as quite ni as nicely as you'd like. So let's have a play around with this. We know sec is 1 over cos, so sec squared is 1 over cos squared. Likewise, cosec squared is 1 over sine squared. Now, we can look at this and go, hmm, this is probably something to do with cos squared plus sine squared is 1. So let's try and replicate that somewhere. And we can see that if we do some cross multiplying, we get sine squared theta plus cos squared theta over cos squared theta sine squared theta which is conveniently 1 over cos squared theta sine squared theta. Now, we can start playing around with this function. So the left hand side of the original expression is going to be our numerator divided by our denominator. But we know that stacked fractions are quite unpleasant. So we change the division, 
into multiplication. And we flip the bottom fraction. We can now see that the sine squared thetas are going to cancel out. We've got cos theta times cos squared theta. Which is what we wanted. This is a very long-winded way of doing this question. You could probably get away with doing each of these bits in their respective fraction, but then it gets a little messy. So that's something to bear in mind. Very quick part B with this. Hence, explain why the expression that we've been playing around with cannot equal 8. So it says hence, so we've got to clearly evidence what we've done in part A. So we can see that this over sec squared plus cosec squared equals 8 tells us that cot cubed, cos cubed theta equals 8. Now, if we cube root, we get cos theta equal 2, and that should really explain it to you, because cos theta must be less than or equal to 1, so it can't equal 2. So therefore, this equation here cannot equal 8. So that's it for the video on sort of solving things with reciprocal trig functions, using them. The next video is going to look in more detail at the trig identity side of things. So come back for that. And thank you for watching.